I'm here with the man, the myth, and the no the all knowing about the business of music, Mr. Benny Pugh. Mr. Pugh has over three decades in the music industry. He's award-winning executive, author, and real estate investor. Tell us about your humble beginnings. Oh man, how humble do you want to go? Right. Um, you know what? Um, I think about in in this climate and this day and age and where we are is. You know, I can meet everybody where they're at because I've gone from being an intern to CEO and from a paper boy to being um, a president. So, you know, I started my career in the music business um, as an intern. And that was a very humbling experience because I had no idea what the intern was. And, you know, realizing that my first opportunity came from Motown Records, that how important the business family structure was. And that was like the center point of of helping me move forward in my business career. Okay. So, and and I like that you said that because that leads me into my my next question. You went to Motown. You went let, let's just start. You were newspaper boy, comedian, and intern to becoming one of the most successful label executives wow. for we'll, we're going to say four decades. How did you get your foot in the door? Um through stand up actually. Uh, I, while I was at St. John's University, I was doing stand-up for like three years. And the uh, woman at Motown Records, who was a regional director of pro uh, radio promotions, um, they booked me for a show. And at the end of the show, she asked me what my plans were. And I hadn't really put together what the next step was in my life. Like, you know, most college graduates or, or high school graduates or people who are in the next step of their life, you know, you're figuring it out. And when she asked me, um, if I wanted to come and be an intern, you know, as a salesperson, because that's some, what my background is, I was like, yeah, I can be an intern and had no idea what an intern was. <laughs> and went down to Motown Records in, you know, my three-piece three suit, um, wingtips and attache case. And, um, you know, when I stepped off the elevator, people looked at me either like, he's the FBI or he's definitely on the wrong floor. And that's how <laughs> I got into the business. <laughs> Dressing for success, so you. Of course, of course, that's important. Okay, okay, okay. I'm glad you mentioned that that you would dress like Superfly, by the way. But Ooh, <laughs> hey, hey, don't put it out. Don't give them all of that, because you know we just fly now. We drop the super. We yeah. drop the super. Okay, he fly. We drop the super. We just fly now. <laughs> okay, the wing tip said it all. All right. Oh, yo, listen, lady, I'm watching you. <laughs> I'm watching you. <laughs> In an interview, you said that Paperboy inspired you to look deeper for talents. Now, and speaking of that, you've been in many eras of music, like four decades. Which era of music did you enjoy scouting, pruning, and creating in the most? You know, um, someone who actually fell into the music business, I honed my skills um, as I got exposed to the business. Mm -hmm. The business aspect of it was my entry point and I was a business person. So I fell in love with the music business through actually doing um, business, you know, and the first task that I had was doing um, uh, expenses, T&E, which are traveling expenses, had no idea what that was. So when she would give me her, her check and she would give me the receipts and all that is, is just a correlation of you know, um, making sure that all the numbers add up. And at the end of um, a couple of weeks, I said to her, you know, how we grew up, I don't really want to see your paycheck. And she was like, what are you talking about? And I said, you know, you give me these receipts and you give me a check and I'm not comfortable knowing how much you make. That's what mm -hmm. I thought. Right, right, right. Like, she's like, what you talking about? She's <laughs> like, no baby, that ain't my check. That's, that's, that's the expenses. I was like, all right, I don't know what expenses are. <laughs> so she said, you know, all that eating we do every night, all that drinking we do every night, the company pays for my travel, they pay for my gas, they pay for my insurance, they pay for um, my phone bill, they pay for my cable. Mm. They do all of that. And that's when I fell in love with the business of music. Um, my next experience with artistry was the first artist that I signed out of Columbus, Georgia, was, which was Field Mob. Mm -hmm. And I heard their song uh, and realized like, wow, this is incredible. And 
uh, I talked the uh, president of the label in to allow me to sign the artist, and and that gave me my real root in understanding being a, a promotions person, as well as hearing some product that I heard could be, you know, a chart topper, and being able to do both. Yeah. So that gave me the opportunity to get into the business and understand both ends and and also you know um propel someone's future a little bit further than what it was i know i know what era you talking about the, staying out of grown folks business and that means looking at that doggone check you don't okay? look at nobody check now you know you don't do that you know you don't do none of that period you don't do none of that none of it man that'll get you slapped okay so <laughs> L.A. Reed inspired your business savvy, so therefore you made yourself an asset, you know, from from day one walking with those wingtip shoes on. Mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> let's talk about assets and liabilities. How did you determine the risk when investing in yourself? So it's for me, it's never been a risk assessment. Assessments has always been divine. Like I'm only here because of the steps that have been ordered by God for me to be at the point of where I am. Right. Um, I have faith and confidence on how I move and I'm okay with what the outcome is good or, or not on how people may look at it or view it, but I'm okay. Right. If when I believe in something, then that's all that matters. Um, and my conviction is what moves me forward. So, you know, at the end of the day, um, my risk reward ratio, only matters about the reward that I give to him. Somebody like, how dare you? I done been over seven, seven, seven labels. <laughs> like, I done left all seven. All seven. At the top of my game. So what we talking about? Period. Okay. I ain't betting on nobody else but me. Who am I betting on? That's right. I dig it. Okay. That's going to go on one of my sticky notes. Affirmation. Bet on yes. yourself. Okay. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so what's game changer advice that someone gave you? It's a rule of thumb that you live by, by now that helped to shape the model you are today. So, you know what? I would have to take it back. Um, LA said to me once, you know, when you come in the room, the room gets better. Mm -hmm. And when you really break down that statement, um, it just shows the value of people mm. and how important interaction with people, making people confident, understanding like, you know, yeah, we're here to do a job, but we should enjoy what we do. Mm. And that's what's going to make the job easier. Okay. So I'm going a, I'm to a speed ahead for a second, just a hot second. Speaking of that, you, you have an event that's coming. It's your time music conference. So when we talk about like interacting, networking with the peers and making people feel like they're of value when they step in the room. Tell us about that. So the conference is the culmination of my book, which is um, on impact life leadership and betting on yourself. So the, the conference is the live version of that. And it gives, you know, the creative and the artists an opportunity to look in how they're really gonna set up their their business in mm -hmm. their future, in their art. Um, being in the music business, you know, I've seen um, deals that have been extraordinary and some that have been not so good. Mm -hmm. And what I, what I realized is, you know, people only know what they know and what they're exposed to. So what I wanna give artists now is an opportunity to come one now and audition and and potentially win ten thousand dollars to bet on yourself is what we're talking about because i'm going to give somebody a grand prize of ten thousand dollars and uh for two days they'll audition at the um uh crown crown plaza uh, on the 12th and the 13th and then on the 14th and 15th we're going to be at the marriott where we're going to have a plethora of panels that are going to uh, range from topics of you know, uh, independent label versus major label, hip hop and spirituality, crypto, um, how to invest um, in real estate. Also, you know, how to pick a lawyer, you know, all of those things that even if you're not in biz in the music business, you'll it'll it'll feed your appetite on learning about business. And on the 15th, we'll um, have a grand finale, which will be judged by you know some some very influential 
um, music exec executives, as well as DJ Envy is one of our celebrity judges. And we're gonna be there and we're gonna get that person that money and we're gonna be there. And then we're gonna come back the next year. Then we're gonna come back the next year. <laughs> then we're gonna come back the next year. <laughs> Period. You, you, you yeah. started a movement, okay? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so now we're gonna toggle back a little bit. And you spoke about your book and just the investments. So tell us what led into you authoring a book, The Life Change. Um, I, I was in a near death car accident where I hit a tree at 90 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. As a passenger, I uh, sustained a level two concussion when you black out between uh, one and five minutes. L3, L4 vertebrae fracture, bulging disc in my back, lacerated liver, um, which led me to lose half my blood supply. And we hit the tree so hard that it severed um, two feet of my small intestine. And in that moment, God put a book inside me called On Impact. And Impact is an acronym that stands for Intuition, Mastery, Pivot, Authenticity, Connection, and teamwork. And it takes a reader through my journey from 11 years old as the paper boy um, to modern day um, as a CEO. And at the end of each chapter, I put together what's called a hit list, which are takeaways, little bite-sized pieces for people, whether they started the chapter, they can go right to the end and read the hit list, or they can read the whole chapter and then get to the hit list. But either way, those are nuggets for people to apply to their lives and pretty much realize if Benny can do it, I can do it too. Period. So, and, and, and Benny did it. Benny's doing it. <laughs> He's doing it. He ain't do He ain't did it yet. <laughs> he ain't do it yet. He's doing it, you know, in, in a sense of look at all that you've accomplished. Cause when we think about that, like, and you stepped away from those seven, um, executive roles. And when we think about what happened recently to Twitch, what happens after you're showing that you know there is an after no matter what that that past may look like there is an after so with the mental health aspect of what you're doing how would you approach artists you know knowing what we know about mental health now so that is a very profound question right and i'm not sure if i'm the right person to answer but i have an answer and i think it all starts with our faith mm. And what we step away from now, we spend more time in chasing um, what other people are doing. Right. Um, putting our time into other people's races, mm -hmm. right? Looking at how other people are being successful, that we don't realize how beautiful the day is that you have. Right. That you know what the life and the people that you spend around, how important that is. Just having someone tell you they love you or you tell them you love them back, what that means. Because someone who's been in a near-death car accident, in an instant, your life can change. So although you aspiring to do a lot of things, you know, you don't plan for the future, you don't know, right? None of us know, know right. the day, know the hour when it comes to an end. So what's more important, what you do know, is the moment and the time that you're in. And if you're in that moment and you're joyous and happy, then nothing else matters. Because you can adjust. You're going to have to adjust. Right, right, right. You adjust if you, if you won the lotto, for the billion dollars they gave that guy, your life, you have to adjust. That's right. Right. And if you lost the billion dollars, your life's going to have to adjust. But what's going to be most important is the people that are there for you for the ups and the downs. That's right. Now, I don't know why Mr. Pugh said he's not the person to answer the question when he clearly just answered the question. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, I don't want no lawsuits. Uh, you know, out here, I won't be canceled. I'm telling you what I feel. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yes, um, ma'am. One of the great things, like with Mr. Pugh and I, I've seen some of your, your other interviews where you're definitely profound. You're profound yourself. You answer each question with great intent. And is that, you know, when you selected the speakers for the event, is that what you were looking for? Like-minded individuals to come out and talk? See, that's why I saved the best for last. See, that's, a, that's another great question. You know why it's great? is because this this event is about i could have done it in new york i could have done it in miami i could have done it in la god brought me to charlotte mm. and what's important is it's an underserved market in talent but it's rich in so much potential so therefore bringing i want to make this a destination not just for the local market but for the global market that Charlotte is an important place. And for the talent to now have the opportunity of bringing people, the people who are coming 
-hmm. are people who care. Right, right? right. The people who are coming are coming on their own dime. Wow. The people who are coming are coming to share the word. The people who come and have impact and importance. And you know what they want to do is give back to the community of people just like them and people who are not like them who care about them. So that's what's most important. And that's why we picked Charlotte. And that's why I picked those people. Okay, okay, okay. And not only did you pick the people, like you have your traditional swag bags. You have you have a whole 10,000s that you're giving away. I'm not a rapper, mm -hmm. but if I was a rapper, I'm gonna sign up, okay? Mm -hmm but you also have some other tools. So can you talk about that? Like you have a resource guide, you have the workbook, you have your book. What 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 else is there, the educational aspect of it can uh, participants expect? So think about it this way. The networking opportunity is exponential because the people who are on those panels, you mm -hmm. couldn't pay to get to. Right. I mean, damn, if I didn't know them as long as I did, they wouldn't take, they wouldn't see me. Facts. So, so what's important is for everyone, I was speaking to a young lady before this interview mm -hmm. from Columbia, South Carolina, and she works at Target. And uh, I was connected with her because she wanted questions about, you know, what the network, what the uh, panels were going to be about. And she was giving me her vision mm -hmm. and how this is her opportunity. And she saved her money and how she wants to make this matter. And it was so rich and fulfilling to me that you know what? That's what's important. If she's the only person that shows up, then I'm okay. Right. Because that's what's impactful to me is that we're going to change lives one life at a time. I don't think she's going to be the only one to show up. <laughs> <laughs> you have a, a, a let's say, a, a wide variety of talents coming out. You have your activists that's coming out. You yep. have your radio uh, personalities mm -hmm. coming out. You have other executives coming out. And the one that definitely tweaked my I interest is the, the activist because she's talking about HIV and that is something that we're not talking Ooh, about. Miss Maria Davis. <laughs> yes. Let's call her name. It ain't no shame in that. Ain't Maria no Davis shame. was the first person in our community talking about in hip hop and music in New York, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, as a New Yorker, we think the world started in New York, forget Jerusalem and all of that, right? The right. world started in New York as a New Yorker. Maria was the first one that we ever knew who was a celebrity in her right as a promoter. Like you just got to think whoever the biggest flyest person is in modern day or past, that was Maria as a woman. Right, she was right, dealing right. with the, you got to think about in the eighties, there was a lot of street action. There was a lot of everything. And this was a woman holding it, right? And she contracted HIV. And I'm not going to spoil the story, but um, she's going to tell it. And you have to think about the significance of her having HIV. Magic also contracted in the same time period. So she was our Magic Johnson wow. on the East Coast. And 30 years later, 30 years later, He's here. remember she's going through it when nobody knew what it was. Right. There was no cock, yo, nobody knew and she survived it. And what that did was change her life. And she's created a whole momentum and movement within herself. And that's important because you don't know what people mm. are going through. We know people with HIV and we don't know. Right. Because that's now right. what they've done is been able to suppress it. Right. Right. So you won't test. But that doesn't mean when you was talking about like the mil the real mental issue, mm -hmm. right? Or what mental health. I don't know what it's like to have HIV and yeah, HIV right. and be able to tell people I don't have it, but I know I have it. Right. Because it's if somebody right. asks you now, do you have it? If you don't tell, right? What you can you say? No. Right. But that's still in your mind. Mm. Right? So I think the beauty of what she is is a woman, you know, who she is as an activist, who she is as a mother. Right. And who she is as a queen is important for the queen city to 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 be able to um, come together and realize and recognize. That's right. I mean, especially in the, with people in the industry, like it's a lot going on out here and that has mental health has elevated it. One conversation doesn't make it less than the other that we need to talk about in the black mm -hmm. community. But, you know, HIV, HIV is still a, a, a situation. You Absolutely. Know? So I think that was important. That was way cool for you to even have that at the conference because we don't get into heavy at these types of conferences. Right. So you're like, nah, we're going to have this conversation, kiddos. So sit down and listen. Yeah. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> so you have someone else that's coming out respectfully one of the most underrated uh producers in charlotte north carolina um what is his name jason jet yes jason jet. jason was one of the first entry points um grind studios when i came to charlotte and uh they embraced me and welcomed me and and uh he's a super super talent oh. uh, he's an amazing amazing artist super super amazing so what will he and other uh, music execs be talking about that's going to gear the interest of the baby boomers that's coming out i think what's important is in you know he's not the he's one of 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 many between um kareem needles um who's you know a grammy award producer who worked on cardi b and 50 cents um from the musical lane uh, we also have uh, Bocas. He's a um, uh, uh, world-renowned manager and artist uh, in his in his own right um, uh, from the creative tip. And what they're going to be sharing is, you know, how how this journey is, mm -hmm. right? How sometimes you can start one way, but in another way, mm -hmm. and that's okay, right? And that's what we don't realize in life, and that's where my book right intuition mastery pivot people get afraid of because you've already like committed to something that's not for you right that's right and you have to know when it's not right reading right. the tea leaves and ultimately in the artist lane or what we believe in when we're putting music out into the marketplace from a mass production standpoint it's not what we like like i can nod my head and bob and hear the music <laughs> and nobody like it but me it's right. really what the people decide so when right. the people aren't interested, then you have to figure out, okay, what's next? Right. Right. So um, in our personal lives, right, bringing the people down to whether it's family, friends, collective, you know, people who help and mold you, if there's something about you that that doesn't work, then you have to be open to listen as well That's so right. that you can make the best choices moving forward. That's right. Because nobody is the perfectionist coming out. Absolutely not. So you you said something in another interview. I bet you say, dang, this girl is getting on my nerves. <laughs> mm, no, I love that you research. <laughs> and I'm glad I know Benny Pugh. <laughs> Period, Pooh. <laughs> so, uh, uh. so you said that uh, radio, mainstream radio is now just a marketing uh, tool. Mm -hmm. Why do you believe that? because stars still chase it. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Um, Beyonce just had a number one urban radio. She had a number one hit. Mm -hmm. right? If radio didn't matter, would she chase, would, would she be involved? Future right. just had a number one hit. If it didn't matter, would people go Gorilla, yo, go um, Gorilla. Glorilla. Right, Glorilla just had a number one record, right? If it didn't matter, would it and why? Because there is still, as you're moving forward, both domestic and international, people still, you know, listen to the radio and the big stars are going to want that extra slice of making sure that they maximize all audiences. Right. So, and is that, so you have, a, and speaking of maximizing all audiences in the marketing aspect, you have radio personalities that's going to be at the event as well. Mm -hmm. So is this something that they're going to cover? Like what are the topics they're going to cover? Oh yeah. So, so brought, so we have Monica Barnes, who's uh, the executive vice president of Steve Harvey's morning show. We have um, Steve Hegwood, who is the owner of core communication, which is streets, Charlotte, Atlanta, Chicago, and Norfolk. We have No Limit Larry, yo, big banger out of Charlotte, right? And they're gonna speak to about how, what, how what's the power of broadcasting. Mm -hmm. They're gonna speak about their business and how they've actually, you know what, consistently and and um, continually maximize and dominate what the local market means or the global market means on how radio works. Okay, and this is my last question. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you think in your opinion, and I think you could appreciate it, or from what I, I saw in your interviews, you can appreciate it, the direction that music is going in um, right now. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you miss about old school marketing promotions and the whole gamut for music opposed to now? 
Well, there was, um, it's, you know, that's a very complex question because you can look at it two ways. Um, what, what the streaming business has done is made it equal and fair for everybody to take their product to the consumer. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And what the retro aspect of, of identifying, creating and marketing and an artist, um, lended itself to actually creating more stars. Mm -hmm. So now we wrestle with, do we just want commerce? Right. Right. Or do you want stars? But ultimately, as long as it's fair on e on either side, then it really doesn't matter. Um, because the people who are talented are always going to find a way. That's right. The people who are talented are going to find a way either way, through a label or without. Right. Everyone else, where it's just art and hobby, guess what? There's more y'all out here now. It's a billion y'all out here on this platform that nobody care about. That. <laughs> but you do. Right. Mama. And your aunts and everybody at the reunions, right? <laughs> hey, take it. <laughs> so this is my last question. How can people get in contact with someone who can put them in contact with the appropriate websites or if they have questions, if they could sponsor, like what, what, what can we do? So what your audience should do is take advantage of this um, powerful opportunity that's coming to Charlotte and they can go to it's your time conference, uh, com and sign up and, um, we will respond via email, but most importantly, you should buy your tickets. Anyone interested in reaching me directly, you can always go to bennypew.com, but don't forget the conference January, the auditions is January 12th, 13th, and the conference is 14th and 15th at, at the Marriott on 100 trade. Should they bring clean music? I guess that, you know, for the hip hop artists, the R and B artists. Art is art. Art is art. Art is art. Got okay. Gospel people art is art. Like I'm not I'm not into that. I might even have to hear the N word. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> you no. gonna hear it. Okay. You gonna hear that? <laughs> you gonna <Okay>. hear it. <laughs> That's what the buds is for. Right. <laughs> I mean it's the culture, so But <laughs> well, we're gonna break that. Okay. No, we're All gonna right. break that. Okay. We're gonna I can break that. It. I know we're gonna hear it, but we're gonna break that. And we're gonna start all of that today. Okay, right? okay. We're okay. gonna break that. Because nobody else runs around doing that. And I think ultimately right now, this generation is primed for leadership. Mm. And in order um, you know, to be led, they have to understand their role and they have to understand their self worth and they have to understand their power and they have to stand their opportunities in believing in themselves. So we're going to let them get away with it now, right? Because they don't know no better. We're going to treat them like the army do. Okay. Right? Well, I seen one of your other interviews and we're running out of time where you, you talk. You keep about... asking the questions. Don't talk about me. We run out of time. Okay. All right, Mr. Pugh. All right. We're going to get you back though. Okay. <laughs> yes, ma'am. So uh, I had a blast. I did want to say that I, I, um, you, you addressed this in another interview where other uh, cultures don't do that and they will penalize you for saying- Ooh, You're good, words. I'm coming back because you, you thorough. <laughs> I love it. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, that they will penalize you for saying certain things and, and get you can't the, the cancel culture. And we are the only cultures that disrespect our own. You know, whether that's man, woman, just like what happened with Meg the Stallion, just like, you know, all the other rhetoric that's out there. We're the only culture that does that. So when you said you're going to put a stop to it, I understood it because mm -hmm. I know your heart. So mm -hmm. with that being said, you said this, we're going to put a stop to it today. Is that something else that you're going to address at the conference? Um, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Abs and, and the conference is really, when you just think about what, what the uh, brand, it's your time. That's mm -hmm. not negative. Right. It's not, it's your time to be negative. That's right. You no, know, it's your time to change. Right. It's okay. your time to believe. It's your time to move different. It's your time to go, it's your time to die. You know, it's your time to, yo, just be negative. You know, when you think about it, it's just uplifting. Right. So if you walk through the door, you're already halfway in. Facts. So the rest is easy. And hopefully we'll have your mind at the point and fertile enough where you'll start to believe differently, think differently, see the opportunities and move accordingly. Let me ask you something. I've, I mean, just out of the interviews I've conducted with uh, 
other artists or what have you to, to bring out that extra talent when you're doing conscious music, what, uh, what advice can you give? Like I said, I've interviewed so many people. Some mm. music is great. Some music, not so much. Some music is like, I understand your intent, but you need to do more. What advice can you give to someone who wants to put out that conscious music, but just is not, it's not going to make the radio. It's not going to make the cut. But that's what streaming's about. Mm -hmm. right? When you think about right now, it's not about being on the radio. Facts. Right now with Spotify, Apple Music, other DSPs, you can actually look and see who's responding to your music territorially. Mm. And you can go feed the marketplace. So that's what the beauty of what, you know, what the label's not being in control of your destiny and people who are true to their art now you can be true to your art. Right. You can make a career if you do the business right. That's, That's why right. you need to come to the conference, understand what you're doing, because now it's your business of music. So it's It's Your Time Conference um, business and music. And that's what's equally important, the business and the music. So as an independent artist, you can do a lot of different things other than just, you know, hope to be signed to a major label. And if you and if you wind up um, being a star on a label, that's equally is, is okay as well. Okay, okay, okay. So now I'm not gonna ask any more questions because I you hope said I... that five questions ago. <laughs> Yo, I you said that like, hey, to go ask another question. Go okay, <laughs> I'm dead serious. That was my last question. I yes, thank you so much for your time. You were a joy, and y'all, like he said, get out there. Get your tickets. If this doesn't educate you and inspire you, I don't know what's going to get you off your behind to get out <laughs> and make that music, okay? And not just the music. Learn about investments. Learn there are, are other plan A, plan B, plan C. Mm -hmm. Plan A will work. We're not saying that it won't work, but have a backup plan. Have a mm -hmm. safety net for the safety net. So get out there and get educated. And that's it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome.